Hi guys, welcome to this revision summary video looking at all the things that you need to know for the calculations if you're doing the foundation paper. The first thing we're going to do then is we're going to have a look at all the different calculations that you can come across from this part of the topic. So, the calculations you need to know. Relative formula mass. Empirical formula. So you need to be able to work out the ratios, you need to be able to work out the complex calculations, and you need to be able to work out the investigation. Conservation of mass. So what is conservation of mass? And how can you work out the maximum mass when you're given the masses of reactants or products? And then finally, concentration in grams per decimeter cubed. How can you convert centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed? And how can you work out the concentration in grams per decimeter cubed? We're going to start off with the easy one, which is relative formula mass. So, nice and simply, the relative formula mass, all you have to do is add up the atomic masses. The atomic masses, remember, they are the big number on your periodic table. Now, the best way to go through this is to have a look at some practice examples. So, I've got four questions here for you. Now, the first thing you'll notice is it always tells you the atomic masses in these questions. So, you don't need to find them on your periodic table. The second thing, the key trigger you're looking for here, is relative formula mass. The second you see that, add the atomic masses together. So if we have a go at carbon dioxide, CO2, you can see there's only one carbon here. Therefore, I have 1 times by my mass of carbon, which is 12, which is 12. Oxygen, however, I've got two of them. You can see that from this little number down at the bottom. So whatever I do, I times by 2. So I've got two oxygens, which is 2 times by atomic mass of 16, which comes to 32. Then, as I said, add them together. So 12 plus 32 gives you 44, and that will get you your mark in the exam. Number two, again, there's a lot of information here, but the key thing is work out the relative formula mass of calcium chloride. Calcium, we've got one of. So one times 40 is 40. Chlorine, I've got two of them. Therefore, two times 35.5, which is 71. Add those together, I get 111. Number three, again, relative formula mass, it tells you in the question, there's your trigger, FeCl3. So Fe, you've got one, and that's one times 56. And then chlorine, you've got three, which is three times 35.5, which comes out to 106.5. So add both of those together, and you get 162.5. And then final one in this section, again, it tells you relative formula mass. The second you see that, add it together. You've got a more difficult one here of aluminium sulfate. Key thing, if you see a bracket, work out what's inside the bracket and then multiply it by outside. So if we use this as an example, aluminium, I've got two of. That's nothing to do with the bracket, so that's just 2 times 27, which is 54. Then let's have a look inside the bracket. So inside the bracket, I've got one sulfur. Therefore, I've got one times 32. I've got four oxygens, so four times 16, which comes to 64. So if I add them together, it gives me 96. But I've got that three. So what I have to do is I have to take that 96 and I have to now multiply it by three. So that comes to 288. So my mass of my sulfates in there is 288. Now I've got to add my aluminiums back on. So 54 plus 288 comes to 342 to get your mark. The next section we're going to have a look at is the empirical formula. Now as I said there are three sections to this. The first one we're going to focus on is how you can work out the ratios. So the definition for the empirical formula is the simplest ratio of atoms. So, for example, if I have C6H12O6, what you need to do is you need to find the number, the biggest number, that all three of those can divide into. And here, you can divide all of them by 6. So if you do that, 6 divided by 6 is 1, 12 divided by 6 is 2, and 6 divided by 6 is 1. So my formula is CH2O. Another example, C3H9. Both of them can be divided by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, 9 divided by 3 is 3, so I have CH3. 
And then finally, both of them can be divided by 4. So 8 divided by 4 is 2, 12 divided by 4 is 3, therefore I have Fe203. The key thing here is this will only be worth one mark. It becomes a lot more complicated, which is what we're going to move on to now. So, the complex calculations then. Let's have a look at a worked example. So this question here says, an oxide of lead was analysed. 0.414 grams of lead was combined with 0.064 grams of oxygen. Calculate the empirical formula. So straight away you can see this is worth more marks, therefore you've got to do a calculation. So the first thing you need to do if you get a question that asks for the empirical formula is divide the mass by the atomic mass. So it tells you the mass in the question and the atomic mass it gives you underneath. So for lead it's 0.414 divided by 207 which comes out to 0.002 and for oxygen you've got 0.064 divided by 16 which comes out to 0.004. That's going to get you one mark in the exam. The second one is to divide each of those numbers you've just worked out by the smallest number. That's going to give you your ratio of atoms. So my smallest number here is 0.002, so I divide both of those by that. 0.002 divided by 0.002 is 1, and 0.004 divided by 0.002 is 2. Therefore, I now need to put this back into my actual elements. I've got one PB, I've got two oxygens, so my formula is PbO2. The third part of the empirical formula section is to have a look at how you can investigate the empirical formula. So you might get a question very similar to this, which says an experiment is carried out to determine the empirical formula of magnesium oxide by reacting magnesium with oxygen. And it then says, describe an experiment to produce these results. So what you have to do then is list off a few steps of how you can do it. So the first thing, you want to measure the mass of your crucible and your lid. That's this thing up here. Once you've done that, you need to measure the mass of your magnesium. And then add the magnesium to the crucible and heat strongly. So when you do that, the magnesium will start to react and it will turn into your magnesium oxide. During the reaction, lift the lid so it replenishes the oxygen, adds it back in, otherwise it will not finish the reaction and you won't get good enough results. So when it's fully reacted and turned into white powder, you need to remeasure the mass of the magnesium oxide crucible and lid, and then take away that mass that you measured out in step one, so subtract the mass of the crucible and lid, and that tells you the mass of your magnesium oxide. So those are the six steps. The next section of the video is going to have a look at conservation of mass. So you need to be able to tell me what conservation of mass is and then work out the maximum mass in calculations. If we start off with the definition then, nice and simply, the mass that you put into a reaction is always the mass that you get out. So the reactant equals the products. So for example, if I have hydrogen and react it with oxygen to make water, and I put four grams of hydrogen in and react it with 32 grams of oxygen, in total, my mass of my reactants is 36 grams. Therefore, my mass of my products must be 36 grams. So it doesn't matter what chemicals you're using, the mass in is the same as the mass out. However, you might need to be able to do a full-on calculation on this. They might only give you one of the values and say, you've got four grams of hydrogen, for example, how much water will you get? So for example, let's have a look at a question. We have the Solvay process here, which is 2NaCl plus CaCO3 goes to Na2CO3 plus CaCl2. And it says calculate the maximum mass of sodium carbonate that could be formed. So that is the thing that you want. So the first thing you do is work out the relative formula mass. Now a really good habit to get into is the second you see relative atomic masses and chemicals in there, work out the relative formula mass. That's going to get you a mark. So, let's start off with sodium carbonate. I've got two sodiums, that's 2 times 23, which is 46. One carbon, 1 times 12 is 12, and three oxygens, 3 times 16 is 48. Add that all together, I get 106. And then calcium carbonate, that's the thing that we have. So, CaCO3, 
one carbon, one times 12, and three oxygens, three times 16. So that gives me 100. So once we've got the relative formula mass, the next step is to divide the formula mass of the thing that you need, and the thing that we need is sodium carbonate, by the thing that we have, which is the 40 kilograms of calcium carbonate. So we take the relative formula mass of those, it's 106 divided by 100, which gives me 1.06. That's my ratio, so that gets me my second mark. And then all I have to do for my third step is take whatever that number is and times it by the mass in grams or kilograms or tons, which in this case is 40 kilograms. So 1.06 times by 40 gives me 42.4 kilograms for my third mark. The next calculation you need to be able to work out is concentration in grams per decimeter cubed. Now it doesn't matter if you see it, grams decimeter minus three or grams divided by decimeter cubed, it's the same thing. All you have to do is to be able to manipulate this triangle where mass is in grams, volume is in decimeter cubed and concentration is grams per decimeter cubed. So if you want to work out the concentration, nice and simply, you need the mass and you divide it by the volume. However, sometimes they'll give you the question in centimeters cubed, so you've got to convert it into decimeters cubed first. So for example, 22 grams of sodium chloride is dissolved into 650 centimeters cubed of water. What is the concentration in grams per decimeter cubed? So marking point one is to convert the volume. We've got 650 centimetres cubed, we need to convert it, so we divide by 1,000, which gives me 0.65 decimetres cubed. And then once I've got that, all I need to do is mass divided by volume. My mass, it told me in the question, was 22. So 22 divided by 0.65, which comes out to 33.84615 grams per decimetre cubed. Now normally, it's a good idea to round to two decimal places, but sometimes you might see something saying, write your answer to three significant figures. So work out what three significant figures is, find your first value, go three figures beyond that, and then round up. So here I've got 33.8 grams per decimeter cubed to three significant figures. And that brings this revision summary video to an end. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.